tell me something. When you go to a school, yeah. you go to Jewish schools, yeah. to open schools, to own universities, first of all, where do you go? To everybody, yeah, to, everybody. to everybody. everybody. You know, I enjoy going to not Jewish schools more than I do to Jewish schools. Because going to Jewish schools, I'm talking to kids that mostly know this situation anyway. Yes. When I go to non Jewish schools, it gives me the opportunity to educate somebody that might not know. So it's, it, for me, it's more, of a, you know, it's more of a calling that way. All right, when you go to a non Jewish school or an open school or a okay. university, whatever it goes. Whatever it is. What is the reaction of the people? Because maybe they are manifestation against you. Yeah. There are oh, people yeah. that came inside yeah. just to bother you, yes. to break. Yes. How do you control it? Or how is the reaction of the people there and yours? You know, sadly, uh, Israeli speakers who come to campus, this is not a new thing that we're attacked. It happens all the time. Now we have to have security. So when I go to a campus, there's security that's there to make sure that there's no people who are going to physically attack me. Although, I'm an IDF sergeant. I, I'm sure I could take care of myself. But nobody's going to physically attack me. That said, I've been to university campuses where I've walked down the street and there are people with flags screaming my name, spitting at me. Horrible things. Does it make me want to stop? No. It fuels me to go further because I see it. I see the hate. I see the anti-Semitism. And it says, you know what? You have to keep going. Why do you think there is this, that anti-Semitism? From my point of view, in many years yeah. ago, we do what is called as well, let's say it, yeah. not as well. We educate people yeah. talking about Israel and Jews because yeah. many is an anti Semitism or a, because they don't know. Right. It's a strange thing. Right. We are walking, on, uh, we are walking to, uh, to, to a religious part yeah. on Saturday instead of Sunday. Right. We have many other co uh, traditions. Yeah. So, how to do it? Is that correct to, le to speak? Is that you think that? You know, I think that. You're talking about provocation, like to provoke somebody? Not to provoke, to, uh, how, how, when education can help reduce anti-Semitism or anti-Semitism. You, know you know what I say to the students when they say to me, I feel like I've been doing this so long and I'm fighting and nobody listens to me yes. and it doesn't make a difference. And I always say to them the same thing, it just takes one person. If you sit in a class of 50 and only one person at the end comes up, I'll give you an example. When I was on my tour in the UK, I was at Nottingham University. Beautiful university was my biggest uh, tournament. There was like 350 students, one of those old universities that has the tiered uh, theaters. Beautiful. There was one student at the end who, she came in with a Palestinian flag. The security said to me right at the beginning, do you want us to kick her out? I said, absolutely not. I said, I want her to stay as long as she's quiet. I said, she's the one that I want to talk to. Yes. She came, she sat, she got up at the end, she asked her question. She got up and she opened a piece of paper and she asked the question, started to read it off the piece of paper. I later found out that UK Labour, the Labour Party, sent her to, to bother me. She had no idea. She read the thing, she came up to me after the cameras were off. The, the entire thing was filmed. She came up to me after the cameras were off. She shook my hand and she said, I'm so sorry. She said, I didn't know what you were talking I didn't know the things that you said. She said, I now understand that the things I hear is only one side of it. It was so good to hear another side of it. So that for me made the entire trip worth it. It was just not one person because what she's going to do now is going to go tell her friend and her friend's going to tell her friend and her friend's going to tell her friend. Right. For Jews around the world, yeah. most of it in Latin America and now in the United States and in Toronto and in Canada, yeah. that people thought it never happen, will happen here. It never will happen here. With us. What is our job? What is our deal, what, what do we have to do? We have to talk every time no. good about Israel. No. We have to talk about that we don't we don't support it, but we support it. How do we have to work? Because many things that you have to say, yes. Israel is the best, and every time talk about good about yeah. Israel. For many, they have to separate Israel from Jews. For others, they have to be together. What do we have to do as Jews around the world? So let's be honest, because I said this in the beginning, I don't say Israel is the best all the time. I'm Israeli. Israelis don't say Israel is the best all the time because it's, it's bad in some things. It's very good in some things. It's, you know, somewhere in the middle and stuff. Yeah. Like every country, yeah. it's no different than any other country. So, no. So I think we need to be honest first and foremost. First and foremost, be honest about what it is we're talking about. But you need to be honest. Being honest also means that we have to be able to accept the fact that sometimes we have to talk about things that maybe we don't want to talk about, like what's happening in the West Bank, like what's happening in Gaza, but to put it in the proper context of why it's happening. So it's not just happening because it's happening, it's happening because there's a reason. What is the reason? 
go into that. All right. So that's how to do it to, to deal with that. That's how to deal with that. And when I'll somebody comes to you and yeah. maybe let me tell you something that happened sure. someday. Yes. All right. They were some Jewish kids. They were to a non-Jewish to a university. And for that thing, there was a similar. Uh, they, they were playing like being in the United Nations. Yeah. You know this. And in that university, they brought some brother, 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 some brother, somebody from the Palestinian Authority yeah. to talk about it. Okay. So one of the teachers decided they have to go out and not hearing him. Why? Because it was like to make a statement that they were not interesting. Okay. That they were not. I that, understand. That they protest about bringing that guy to talk about it. Okay. Some others say we have to speak, we have to hear and answer him. Okay. You are talking about kids, that maybe they are not prepared. Right. You are giving Both a, a, Not prepared, yes. let's say. Not so prepared. That, that everybody thinks we are prepared. We know yes. we speak about Israel or <laughs> right. No. And the other ones say we have to answer him yes. in another panel. Right. Or just to hear him and know about it. Right. What is the best? thing to do in a situation like that for example. I think it's very important to know who the speaker is because of course there are speakers that come to campuses and I look at them and I'm like he's a very good per per speaker he's He's as a representative. It's maybe somebody that talks about it. Well, not but just it's also what, what is that person? Who's what's the organization that person's coming from? The, um, the Palestinian Authority Direct, for example. Okay, so the Palestinian Authority Direct, depending on who that person is, yes. for Saber Khad, for example, right. who is a speaker, is is a problem because he's you, we know and he's overtly and said it out loud that he supports terrorist organizations. Yes. I don't want that person coming to my school talking to my children. All right. If you support peace, if you are a person, you know. With All right. But he's already in the school. You get to there and okay. he's already speaking in the yes. university. Then what you need then what I would what I always tell them that I need to do is know who that speaker is. Definitely go. Don't walk out. That's right. ridiculous. You should go because you need to stand up and ask a question. Ask a question that he's going to stand there and need to answer the question correctly and honestly. And then everybody's going to start to see what that question is answered. But he's if he's prepared like you for example talking about you right and you're not Unless prepared. He lies. No no Unless he lies. Problem. But no. yes he's going to okay. you know he's yep. going to Say it his way. Yes? That, He's going to talk about bad yeah, Israel yeah. and if you ask him, yeah. you are not prepared. You are giving him a touch, yeah. a, a way to speak more about against Israel. Okay. You have to ask him yeah. if you are not prepared or you don't know, or you have to antagonize, you have to be, enter in a fight with him and you are going to be bad. How to deal with that? Or you just have to speak, to, hear, to sit, hear and learn about it and prepare to answer next. That is a, that's a, that, listen, there's two types of people in the world. There's, you know, there's a person like me who will stand up and I will talk until you pass out. You're just so tired, you can't talk anymore. I will talk and talk and talk and talk. You know this. I will talk and talk and talk and talk. But there's the other type of people who don't know what they're talking about. So the more they talk, the worse it is for them. Yes, they, exactly. Right. So absolutely. So I think in that situation, it's a good thing to sit back, understand what that person is saying to you, take that misinformation that they're giving you for the next time and build on that. So say he said A, B, C, D, we know that's not true. Let's now educate ourselves with those facts, what the yes, real facts right. are, so that we know for next time. Yes, because the normal answer to what, when somebody from the Palestinian yes. Authority just yes. talk about it, we, we decided to say, no, Israel is, Israel is the best place. You know, you, you could not have waste if there was no Israel. You could not have this medicine. You won't have the pill. It's yes. like saying, this is the good things just to cover what he's minutes. saying. And he said, yes, but you are a... You must but, be honest. All right. Must you must be honest. honest. And if you don't know, don't okay. ask him because you're... 100%. You are. <laughs> yes, if you don't know, better sit and listen. And learn. You have to be prepared. So, and to be prepared, you have to le re re le re read with you, yeah. learn in camera, learn in the area of video, yeah. learn yeah. in our place. Uh -huh. It's a, a, a most important thing is to be prepared yes. to that. Yeah. And that's what you do here. Yes, right. absolutely. When we will give you, hear you here in Mexico? Well, that is a good question. When are you going to invite me to here? Well, <laughs> we, we will program it to, to have it here in many universities. You know that now Mexico and Israel has a very good relation. Yes, I know. Now there is going to be a symposium about Mexican doctors and Mexican and investigators in Israel to work together. Wonderful. It's going to be an innovation day with the University of Tel Aviv. Okay. Everything is going to happen yeah. in the next two weeks Wonderful. here in Mexico. Yeah. So it's a good relation. How to improve it, how to do it, how do you see it yeah. in that way? I love it. I mean, I think the more, the more we can collaborate and the more we can do things together between countries, I think that that is wonderful. You know, 
I mean, I'm sure you know this, but the what kind of pushed in the last little bit the relationship between Israel and Mexico to be so close was that Israel was one of the first responders here after the earthquake yeah, yeah. last. Seventy-two people came here just from the army yeah. and around yes. other thirty or yeah. forty from other yeah. Israeli organizations. Yes. Israeli. Yes. Yes. So and they so, did it just because they wanted to help. Of course. So that is one of the things that really put Israel on the center stage here in Mexico. People were like, maybe whatever they knew about it, this all of a sudden made it, wow, like we understand now. Because in Hebrew, for those of people who don't speak Hebrew, yes. we always say, save a life is more important than anything, yeah? So, you know, if you can't, can't save a life, Israel will always be the first responder on scene. Because sadly, by the way, people always say, well, why is Israel so well um, educated in those things? It's because sadly we have to be because of the situation that we have back home. Wars. The, but that the, doesn't mean you have to go outside and it can no. be in Kenya, Turkey, and Turkey. Haiti, I mean, uh, oh, yes, 100%, all of them. So, so, you know, that's something that I am so proud of is the, the work that Israel and, uh, you know, Zahar and or IDF, that they do around the world to be able to really Help, help humanity. It's, it's one of it's one of Israel's greatest uh, gifts. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank it you. was very interesting. Thank you. And I think it will help many people to know how to react, how to answer, I hope and so. how to do things between Israel and many other countries. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.